All right, welcome into Tech Stacks Rewind, presented by Yeti. Nick Savage with us. Nick, I started the show off with the the mood. I hope I didn't set the tone. Do you think the tone was set before the show started? Um, well, yes, but normally it's a Friday. You know, we get a little. You know, that we get a little bit higher, regardless of how the team's doing. But today, I feel like it stayed kind of in the slog. But I mean, I I think A and M is even w- with their quarterback situation. I think they'll be close to covering that 18 and a half point spread. I just don't have any faith in Mississippi State. Well, uh, appreciate the optimism. Every once in a while, some of us have to have it. Uh, so on the show today, Olin Buchanan joined us on the Go Hour. First time we've done that in a long time. Kidding. Uh, he was great. We banked on some things. We gave us a little A&M Ohio State preview. Had an insider from Ohio State. We had also Coach Tom Schubert with us as well. Billy Lucci. The final basically two hours of the program. And of course, the final countdown one of the brothers, one of the McKinney brothers, a little bit more optimistic than the other. Um, it's worth the listen. It's Texas Rewind. Olin, what are you banking on? Okay, I am banking on the Texas A&M defense holding Mississippi State to less than 267 yards. Give me the reason behind okay. that number. Why 267? Yeah. Okay, here's the deal. So I looked it up, and I, I, I looked at their games against Power 5 competition, and A&M, average-wise, average, has held their Power 5 opponents to 69 yards below their season average. Okay. Okay? So I look at uh, Mississippi State, and they're averaging 335 yards a game. So I – Subtract sixty nine from that. And I come up with a two sixty six, but you know, got to give some some you know wiggle room there. So right, so two sixty seven, two sixty seven. Okay, okay. In a year that there's been a lot of unknowns or knowns that are not good, my bank on is going to be super simple. I bank on guys that I count on. I count on Anaya Smith and Edge Cooper every week to come and bring the business. So Shamar Turner, Shamar Turner brings it right. Like there's certain do, and I know that's Captain Adele Obvious, Diggs, yeah. But at this point of the season. That's what I can bank on. I'm with you on that. I like that. Yeah. I like, like I want, sometimes I try to think of somebody that like I'm going to bank on that typically you don't think about, right? Like that's usually my style. Hey, no, Tom is going to have a big game. And he might. And he might. Yeah. I'm banking on, I'm just going to keep it easy, guys. I know Anaya Smith, when he's out there, is going to bring it 100 miles an hour. All the time. And Edge Cooper is too. All the time. Yeah. I think Noah played really hard last week. He did. One of the things that I noticed was you think this is going to be a very physical game against Ohio State. Why do you expect it to be such a physical game? Well, first of all, the tradition of the Big Ten, as you know, is super physical. I mean, every team in the Big Ten, they have players that probably could play football for most most teams. But in particular, with our team, A&M, if you give them space and uh, room and you don't bump into them and take shooters out of their rhythm, they're going to have a tough night. I know Ohio State, I actually talked to some staff members. They're super worried. So they know they've got to be physical. And A&M's physical. You know, for an SEC team, I, I don't think there's anybody else of uh, the 14 teams that plays more physical basketball than we do. Now, we're not the tallest team, but we've certainly got the bodies and the athletes to compete with anybody. So I think it's going to be one of those games where I, I refer to it as a chess match where each coach is going to try to figure out how to take the other team out of their rhythm. Um, As you noticed, uh, the first game for us, uh, one of the things I said that I thought was our Achilles heel in years past playing inferior teams is we have some uh, lapses sometimes where we take two or three minutes off and we let a team get back in the game. And that's what happened to us uh, Monday night when we played Commerce. We were up 20 to uh, 7. The next thing you look up two minutes later, it's 20 to 18. They won an 11 0 run. We can't have that happen against great teams, or we're going to probably uh, lose the ball game. So I don't think we'll do that. I think Ohio State's going to really get into us. Uh, they play man to man defense like we do most of the time. They don't really change up, but they're doing a great job of taking away strengths of other teams. But that- I'd like to see that for the for the kids, for the players, yes. and and for the coaches that are working hard. But it doesn't it doesn't change anything it doesn't mean anything it's good on the lsu ledger when you want to uh i mean look i don't unless Jaden daniels doesn't play because i don't know when you're going to get max johnson back and i'll say this flatly like i'm i do not expect that we'll see him this weekend with a rib injury and a quarterback Mm -hmm. and you've got to look out for because max would probably trot out there and play any chance he could you got to look out for his 
well being on an injury like that. So I I don't I expect to see Jalen Henderson quarterback. Um I do expect them to be pretty healthy elsewhere. I don't know about Evan Stewart. I don't think he's practiced much this week, but uh, uh, the corners are back that, that oh, they good. could have used. So, you know, they really could have used them last week in Oxford, but they're back in the mix um, and practicing. And Le'Veon is that, – that's not – you know, it was reported. I don't even know where I kept getting texted. It was ACL. It's, it's not. He's, he's available. Like, I, if he doesn't play this week, then I I would say he would definitely be able to play next week if if needed. But you're playing Abilene, so maybe I mean maybe I, LSU. Yeah, but he might he might play tomorrow. Actually, I mean I don't think that's a sure thing that he's out. I think Le'Veon Moss is one of those kids too. We I talk about Max. He's the same way. Like he wants to play. Mm-hmm. He wants to run the ball. He wants to play. He he'll play hurt. I've always heard like him last year. They were saying him McKinley Jackson. Uh, Haynes were three kids that like you had to kind of tell them, hey, you need to throttle break. back. Like that's you're just making it worse on yourself. And I, I can ride with those type of guys. Those dudes, guys like Anaya Smith that's out there competing like he is. I mean, I'm I'm obviously leaving guys off. There's more than just that, but dudes like that are they they need more of them. To me now, it's like where where's the no, it's a valid hey, point. I mean, it, it, there is there is a point you get to as a player where you've heard the same speeches over and over for three or four years, and if you're not winning games and it's not getting better, then there starts to become that, I don't want to say apathy, but just that lack of faith. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, losing's a habit just like winning is. Lack and of it, faith in your coaches, your teammates. Yeah, and so that's why winning a game like Ole Miss and even winning the rest of this season out and beating LSU and going winning a bowl game, like, the only way that we're going to get things back on track for 24 is if we can change that culture, that mindset of, yeah, this does pay off. We are winning. We are on a winning streak. Let's carry that over into the next season. So, yeah, there's not a lot to play for. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I get the apathy if you're a fan. However, we have to believe that these last three games really matter because I think they do going into the next That's season. That's all you can do is hope and believe that they do matter. And if you want to get all, go down that road, you got to hope and believe that that matters to the players on this team and it matters to the players in the portal and it matters to these high school kids because that's what really matters is keeping your team and then getting new talent on the team. And if it matters to those kids, that's all that really matters about this deal because the coach – anyways, that's the big issue. And you got to – in 2023, it's always been this way, but now more than ever, you also got to keep the – Donors, yeah, hopeful and yeah. Good. because imagine going to them now and saying, "Hey, uh, we need to really ramp up things on the NIL front," mm-hmm. and they're going <laughs> for, for what? what? For what? <laughs> like yeah. what? Like wow. I felt like we already did, done we, that. Yeah. yeah, we've already done it. <laughs> Where's that, that guy? And that, that's not just an A and M thing. And David yeah. and I have talked about this. This is a, a college football 2023 thing. You think I heard TCU had about. And it's not its not going to sound like a lot, but it, it is a decent amount. I heard they had like $5 million across the board for their NIL. Nick, have we been growing our YouTube numbers? Or have people kind of stopped? Uh, yes, we're still growing, but not as fast as we were when the hype train for A&M was chugging at, at full speed. So, uh, What did they say? Oh, Kay, Kay's not happy with me saying chugging. What's wrong with chugging? I don't know. Sorry, K Nagley. Goodness. Big swallow. Anyways. What else can you say? Hey, now. That was awful. Like, comment, subscribe.